Hello and welcome to Daily Prayer today for January 8th, 2022. Glad that you are with me today. Let's go ahead and get started. Today is Elvis Presley's birthday, National Bubble Bath Day, Argyle Day, Earth's Rotation Day, where the Earth rotates on an almost vertical axis, National English Toffee Day, yum, National Joy Germ Day, so spread that joy, National Vision Board Day, National Winter Skin Relief Day, and the War on Poverty Day. Let's go ahead and get started. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. You created the day and the night, O God. You set the sun and the moon in their places. You set the limits of the earth. You made summer and winter. Our psalm for today is one forty or is number forty seven. Clap your hands, all you peoples. Shout to God with loud songs of joy, for the Lord the Most High is awesome, a great king over all the earth. God subdued peoples under us and nations under our feet. God chose our heritage for us, the pride of Jacob whom God loves, Selah. God has gone up with a shout, the Lord with the sound of a trumpet. Sing praises to God, sing praises. Sing praises to our King, sing praises. For God is the King of all the earth. Sing praises with a psalm. God is king over the nations. God sits on God's holy throne. The princes of the peoples gather as the people of the God of Abraham. For the shields of the earth belong to God. God is highly exalted. And Psalm 147. And by 147, I mean 149. Praise the Lord. Sing to the Lord a new song. God's praise in the assembly of the faithful. Let Israel be glad in its maker. Let the children of Zion rejoice in their king. Let them praise God's name with dancing, making melody to God with tambourine and lyre. For the Lord takes pleasure in God's people. God adorns the humble with victory. Let the faithful exult in glory. Let them sing for joy on their couches. Let the high praises of God be in their throats and two-edged swords in their hands to execute vengeance on the nations and punishment on the peoples, to bind their kings with fetters and their nobles with chains of iron, to execute on them the judgment decreed. This is glory for all God's faithful ones. Praise the Lord. Now for our thanksgiving for baptism. The Lord be with you and also with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Merciful God, we give thanks that through the gift of our baptism, you offer the forgiveness of sin and wash us clean from all evil. By the power of your Holy Spirit, renew our lives and make us worthy to enter into your eternal sanctuary. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. Our readings for today, first one is Exodus chapter 17, verses 1 through 7. Listen for God's word to speak to you. From the wilderness of sin, the whole congregation of the Israelites journeyed by stages, as the Lord commanded. They camped at Rephidim, but there was no water for the people to drink. The people quarreled with Moses and said, Give us water to drink. Moses said to them, Why do you quarrel with me? Why do you test the Lord? Well, the people thirsted there for water, and the people complained against Moses and said, Why did you bring us out of Egypt to kill us and our children and livestock with thirst? So Moses cried out to the Lord, What should I do with this people? They are almost ready to stone me. The Lord said to Moses, Go on ahead of the people, and take some of the elders of Israel with you. Take in your hand the staff with which you struck the Nile, and go. I will be standing there in front of you on the rock at Horeb. Strike the rock, and water will come out of it, so that the people may drink. Moses did so. In the sight of the elders of Israel, he called the place Massa and Meribah, because the Israelites quarreled and tested the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? Then from Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23. 
He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created, things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers. All things have been created through him and for him. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning, the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. And you who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds, he has now reconciled in his fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before him, provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard, which has been proclaimed in to every creature under heaven, I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel. From John chapter 7, verses 37 through 52. On the last day of the festival, the great day, while Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me, and let the one who believes in me drink. As the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. Now, he said this about the spirit which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. When they heard these words, some in the crowd said, This is really the prophet. Others said, This is the Messiah. But some all asked, Surely the Messiah does not come from Galilee, does he? Has not the scripture said that the Messiah is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? So there was a division in the crowd because of him. Some of them wanted to arrest him, but no one laid hands on him. Then the temple police went back to the chief priests and the Pharisees who asked them, Why did you not arrest him? The police answered, Never has anyone spoken like this. Then the Pharisees replied, Surely you have not been deceived too, have you? Has anyone of the authorities or of the Pharisees believed in him? But this crowd, which does not know the law, they are accused, accursed. Nicodemus, who had gone to Jesus before, and who was one of them, asked, Our law does not judge people without first giving them a hearing to find out what they are doing, does it? They replied, Surely you are not also from Galilee, are you? Search and you will see that no prophet is to rise from Galilee. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. So our readings for today, we have from Exodus, um, the story of Meribah and uh, what was the other name? Massa. So this is immediately after sort of the exodus from Egypt. The people have gone across the Red Sea. They're now in the, um, in the wilderness of Sin. Um, it is spelled like sin, and I said it as sin. It's probably actually more like Sin, as in Sinai is one of the mountains in this Sin area. It's, it's the area around this mountain of Sinai. Um, they're there and there is no water. And so this is one of the, the first encounters that they have. They have seen all of this miraculous stuff. They have seen God provide for them during the, the plagues. They have seen God bringing them out of Egypt where they had slavery. They have seen God bringing them across the Red Sea on dry land and all of the army of Pharaoh and Pharaoh himself being consumed, being drowned in the Red Sea. They have seen God's providence, but now they're thirsty. Now they don't have anything to drink, and so they complain. This will be a common um, occurrence with these people, with the Hebrew people, but it's a common occurrence of all of us, isn't it? We're pretty good at complaining. Well, Moses cries out to God and says, God, help me out here. How am I going to give them water? God says, well, 
do it this way. And he calls elders aside from the people. He goes to the mount, the the um, a rock of Horeb, and he hits the rock, and water comes out miraculously. Um, there's a very clear statement here that they are going to be provided for by God's providence. God is going to provide for them. There's no way that anyone in this camp, Moses or otherwise, would know if you just hit that rock, then water's going to come out if there was sort of a natural occurrence. Or certainly nobody has that ability to hit a rock with a, with a stick and have water come out. Neither of those are able to happen. But God says, I'm going to show how you're going to do this. You notice that there are elders who are there who are witnesses to this miraculous event. They see that, that God is providing for them through Moses. Um, the, uh, the Mishnah, the um, extra sort of rabbinic writings, says that this, this rock actually kind of follows them around. And so they o- always have some sort of water that goes with them. Um, But again, this is a very clear establishment that God is providing for these people. It's not something that they are able to do by themselves. God is providing. Then we have from Colossians, um, Paul is talking about who Christ is. Christ is, and we will, you notice there's very similar theology here and very similar words here than as we have been looking at in the devotions through Advent and Christmas. On John chapter 1. We see very similar theology here. He is the image of the invisible God, the firstborn of all creation. Uh, For in him all things in heaven and on earth were created. Things visible and invisible, whether thrones or dominions or rulers or powers, all things have been created through him and for him. Without the presence of Christ, without the word, nothing could be created. He himself is before all things, and in him all things hold together. All things work together. All things um, connect. Could not be otherwise if he was not here. What about us? He is the head of the body, the church. He is the beginning the firstborn from the dead, so that he might come to have first place in what? Everything. For in him all the fullness of God was pleased to dwell, and through him God was pleased to reconcile to himself all things, whether on earth or in heaven, by making peace through the blood of his cross. So now what about us? You who were once estranged and hostile in mind, doing evil deeds. We who are sinners, who have fallen short of the glory of God. He, Christ, has now reconciled in his own fleshly body through death, so as to present you holy and blameless and irreproachable before God. So through the death, of Christ, we, who were once estranged, who were once disconnected from God, are now reconciled, connected back, restored to a proper place. And we can be presented before God as holy, blameless, and irreproachable. There's no way we could do this on our own. It's the same story as Exodus. There's no way I can hit a stone and make water miraculously come out. In the same way, there's nothing that I can do to make myself righteous. There's nothing that I can do to make myself holy, set apart, pure. There's nothing at all that I can do uh, to be irreproachable before God. God is all those things, irreproachable and holy and blameless. We are not. But by God's work through Jesus Christ, we are imbued with that. We are given that same thing. It is God's providence that does this. 
provided, and there is a caveat, right? Provided that you continue securely established and steadfast in the faith without shifting from the hope promised by the gospel that you heard and which has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven. I, Paul, became a servant of this gospel, this good news, this particular statement that because of Christ's righteousness, we are able to have righteousness. This is the gospel in a nutshell, right? This is um, anything that we say. If, if we were to claim, you know, self-help, if we were to claim that we can do better by ourselves, it's false. Now, we put in work, certainly, right? There is an aspect where we have to uh, bring those things in our lives sort of under... Um, we need to to participate in that reformation and that repentance standpoint. Scripture is very clear about that as well. Repent for the kingdom of God is near. But Scripture is also clear that it is actually God who is at work in us both to will and to work. That is God in us, giving us the power and the ability to do this work. Just like God gave that ability to Moses to hit the rock, and water might come out. That's not something he had by himself. But God gives us the power to, to reform. God gives us the power to repent. God gives us the power to change our actions, our attitudes, the things that we do. God gives us the ability to do that. We still have to pick up the stick and, and hit the rock. We still have to participate, but it is God who is at work in us. Speaking of water, Jesus speaks in John's gospel. This is at the end of the, uh, on the last day of the festival. Which festival is this? Uh, this is the festival of booths. Very appropriate because the festival of booths, it was the, um, festival it's usually in the fall where the jewish people would gather this was one of the the high feasts where they would gather in jerusalem and they would live in booths in tents to remember the time that they were off in the wilderness like we read about in exodus and the very beginning the first day and the last day there is this um sort of elaborate um sort of uh, reenactment of this miraculous, miraculous giving of water by God. Exactly what we read about in Exodus. On that last day, when they're getting ready to put forth this thing, Jesus stands up. While Jesus was standing there, he cried out, Let anyone who is thirsty come to me. And let the one who believes in me drink, as the scripture has said, out of the believer's heart shall flow rivers of living water. John explains, he said this about the spirit, which believers in him were to receive. For as yet there was no spirit, because Jesus was not yet glorified. Jesus uses this imagery of water in the wilderness to describe himself. Christ, like is said in, in um, Corinthians, Colossians, Colossians, um, is that reconciliation that we could not have by ourselves. Christ is that reconciling that God is doing with us. And so he says, I am the water, the living water. I'm the one that will give you true, abundant, real, actual life. Just as God gave you literal water in the wilderness, I will give you this living water, this metaphorical water, this spirit that will be poured out upon all flesh. Well. This doesn't go over well. There's lots of different opinions about who he is and what's going on. The crowd says various things like, is, it, is this really the prophet, right? Is he Elijah? Or this is the Messiah. This is the son of David that we've been waiting for. But then others say, no, surely the Messiah does not come from Galilee, does he? Has not the scripture said that Messiah is descended from David and comes from Bethlehem, the village where David lived? So there's a division among them. John does not, uh, just brings up this possibility or this idea that Jesus does not come from, uh, that Jesus comes from Galilee. 
several people in John's gospel make mention of this fact. There is no story about how Jesus was born miraculously in, in Bethlehem in John's gospel. Frankly, he just allows that to be this tension and this question. And it is a reason why some people don't believe him, because he doesn't follow the pattern that we were expecting. Others believe that the things that he is saying are indeed true. Well, the Pharisees do not believe at all. The leaders do not believe him, and they seek to have him arrested. But the police come back and don't arrest him. And the Pharisees say, well, what, what's the matter? Why didn't you arrest them? They say, well, nobody said these kinds of things before. They say, well, you must be from Galilee, right? Um, you've been deceived too. All of us, all of the elite, all of those who know things and how things work, those of us who study scripture, none of us believe in this guy. Well, Nicodemus doesn't say directly that he believes in him, but he does bring up the fact, well, do we actually, are we in the um, habit of just saying somebody's guilty without giving them a trial? And the rest of them, they just pound him down, say, oh, you must be from Galilee too. You must be an uncultured swine. Search the scriptures. Nobody who is anybody comes from Galilee. It's prejudice. It's their assumptions. And John just allows this, uh, these assumptions to, to be there. We have to sort through them and figure them out. If we did not have the benefit of, of Matthew and Luke's gospel, we would also be asking these same questions. Does it matter where he is born? Or does it matter who he truly is? Those are our readings for today. Let's join together in prayer. Satisfy us with your love in the morning, and we will live this day in joy and praise. We praise you, God, our Creator, for your handiwork in shaping and sustaining your wondrous creation. Especially we thank you for the ministry of all the baptized. Those who provide for public safety and well-being. those with whom we work or share common concerns, opportunities to share good news with others, the treasure stored in every human life. People of God, for what else do we give thanks? We give thanks for your spirit, for your living water, that inspires us to serve all God's children. That enlivens us, that works in and through us to not only will, but also to work. It gives us the ability to reform and repent. To seek the righteousness that you grant and you give. We thank you that we are not judged by our own actions, but the actions of Christ. We dare to pray for others, God our Savior, claiming your love in Jesus Christ for the whole world, committing ourselves to care for others in his name. Especially we pray for the church in Asia and the Middle East. Those who seek to save the earth from destruction. those who work for the benefit of others. Those who cannot work today. All who proclaim your saving love. People of God, for what else do we pray? We pray for Juanita, mother of Dennis, who has health issues. We pray for Carrie, a friend of Brittany's, who has had deaths in her family. We pray for the family and friends of Freddie, who passed away. Especially, we pray for her daughter, Ashley. We pray for Greg, 
who went to the hospital due to angioedema and is back home and recovering. We pray for an online prayer request for Seth and his ministry, for Suzanne and Bob's son, Tom, who had open, surgery, open heart surgery and is recovering. Continued prayers for Suzanne, friend of Jan Ann's, for Tony, who is recovering from vascular surgery, for the families of Mel and Carol, who came in during the holiday season, for the friends of Mary Lorraine and Amy, Janice and Jennifer. We also pray for Wayne's sister, Diane, who is recovering from surgery. And for all the many prayers that we have on our hearts and our minds. As you cause the sun to rise, O God, bring the light of Christ to dawn in our souls and dispel the shadows of hatred and fear. Give us grace to reflect Christ's glory and let his love show in our deeds, his peace shine in our words, and his healing in our touch, that all may give him praise now and forever. Amen. Let us continue to pray using the words that Christ taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Now may the God of hope fill us with all joy and peace through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Bless the Lord. The Lord's name be praised. Thank you so much for joining me today for daily prayer. Join me tomorrow. Uh, we will have worship at 1030. That's, of, of course, available in person or online here on YouTube. Like this video, share it with someone else. Click on the subscription and the notification button as well as going to our website, johncalvinchurch.org, for more information. Our liturgy today came from the Book of Common Worship of, of the Presbyterian Church USA, 2018 edition, and our readings came from the New Revised Standard Version of the Bible. Go to our Facebook and Instagram account for more information as well, and we will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.